Everyone I know who's been exposed to Saxon math has strong feelings about it. Either they love it or they hate it. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my review of the Saxon math homeschool curriculum. Hi, welcome to Born for Homeschool. I'm Rachel Bourne. My husband and I have four children and this year I'm homeschooling three of them. We have a kindergartner through a fifth grader. I'm so glad you're here today as I share about Saxon math. And we have used Saxon math over the past five, six plus years for our homeschool. And I wanna share with you what Saxon math is, the curriculum and the ideology behind it. I wanna share with you how I tailor it to meet our homeschool needs. So the Saxon Math Homeschool Curriculum is an incremental and spiral approach to mathematics. And it is different from a mastery approach. So a incremental and spiral approach is where concepts are taught in increments. So starting out with very basic, the base knowledge and building on that knowledge in, in increments and then spiraling around to review the concepts that have been taught. And so you're still reviewing 20 plus lessons later, the concepts that were taught at the very beginning of math. So that is really the methodology of Saxon math. So the Saxon Math Homeschool Curriculum is really set up in two different ways. For the kindergartner through third grade level, it is set up in one specific way, and then there's a major shift, and in the fourth grade all the way through high school, there is a different format for presenting the material. And I will show you a little bit later what I mean with that. So I'm gonna share what I think are the pros and cons of Saxon math. So the pros I would say are the spiral and the incremental approach. I love how concepts are taught in um, small pieces and they're continually built upon. And I also love the spiral review. You continually are reviewing the concepts that are taught, the information that has been given and building on that knowledge. And so those are things I absolutely love about Saxon. I was homeschooled from pre-K all the way through high school. My parents used Saxon math for the grades that it was available at that time. And so it was fourth grade all the way through the end of high school. And when I graduated high school, I um, tested a post-college mathematics level. And so um, Saxon math really gave me a strong, um, solid foundation for mathematics. And even in the last few weeks, I have used many mathematical concepts that I was taught using Saxon curriculum because my husband and I are in the process of remodeling um, parts of our home. And so square footage, area, angles, you name it, uh, calculations, we have done it. So, so I think that Saxon math really gave me a strong and robust uh, foundation for mathematics in my life. Now, with that being said, I do not believe that Saxon math is for everyone because the pros that I see for Saxon math, which is the incremental and spiral approach to math is also a con that I see because spiraling around to continually review concepts that are taught and incrementally building on concepts um, takes time. Using the Saxon math curriculum really is a time commitment. It's a time investment. And for me, it was really an important part of our homeschool. And so it is a place that I'm willing to spend the extra time making sure that our kids have a really strong foundation in math. And so even though the time commitment is something I see as a con, I'm also tailoring the Saxon math curriculum to better meet our needs as homeschoolers. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit about how Saxon math curriculum is set up, and then I'm gonna share with you a little bit about how I am tailoring the curriculum to fit our family. So in the K level of Saxon math, there is a teacher's manual and there is a math meeting book. And the math meeting book is for the child. Your child will fill this in and color the patterns and um, begin learning the months of the year 
and the days of the week and you'll start going through the calendar um, with your child. And the Saxon Math K, it's super easy to teach. You literally open the, the page and um, there's a section for lesson preparation. It tells you exactly what to prepare for your lesson and then it walks you through how to teach the lesson and it gives you what to say verbatim, what you should say and how you should teach. So there is a math meeting portion of the lesson and then there is a lesson portion. And the only thing that's different in the K and the first, second and third grade levels of math is that there's no worksheets with the K level. It's just um, the math meeting book and the lesson book, um, the teacher's lesson book. Now, something that I did purchase with my first is the math manipulatives, and I have used the same math manipulatives box that I purchased six years ago um, for my oldest with each child. And so um, that was definitely an investment worth making. So after K, the math levels one, two, and three are very similar. They have a teacher's manual that walks you through exactly how to teach the lesson and the lesson preparations. There is a math meeting book for the student to use every day in your math meeting portion of the lesson. They're very similar to the first math meeting book with the calendar and months of the year, but here we're tracking weather. They're just a little bit different. Again, that incremental building on familiar subjects and um, familiar concepts that are building and getting more complicated as you go along. And then something different than the K level is the um, workbook, the student workbook. And the student workbook is consumable. You simply tear out the pages for the day. The day's pages consist of usually a fact sheet and then a lesson sheet. Um, the lesson sheet has the front, the A side, and then the back, the B side. And then also every five lessons is an assessment. So that is the format of the curriculum in levels K through third. So after the third level or grade three, the format of Saxon math majorly shifts. And instead of there being a teacher's manual that you're teaching the lesson from, it shifts to three different parts of the curriculum. So the three parts of the curriculum then are the student textbook, that contains all of the lessons and the student work. And then there's a solutions manual for the teacher to grade all of the work. And then there is a test and worksheets consumable book. And it contains all of the, um, the facts sheets that are done every day and the test sheets and any extra worksheets the student may need for the lesson is contained in the consumable test and worksheets book. So the format really shifts in that instead of the teacher sitting and reading the lesson, then the student um, is reading the lesson, doing a warm up themselves, and then working through uh, the lesson practice. There's a few um, problems that Specific, specifically pertain to the lesson that was just taught and then is the mixed practice or the problem set of um, 25 to 30 problems where the student works through. And I think this is really where that you can see the spiral approach where um, there is constant practice of mathematical concepts along the way. And that is pretty much the format all the way through the rest of the Saxon program. So I'm gonna share with you some of the ways that I'm tailoring the Saxon Math Homeschool curriculum to my family. And I'm gonna start with my kindergartner. So this year we started um, my son in the kindergarten level of Saxon Math. He has his math meeting book that we've been working through for a couple of months now. And um, he's ready for a little bit more of a challenge and he's ready to do more writing with math. And so I'm planning to go ahead and start level one with him and we'll just see how the worksheets go. So as far as my second grader goes, she's doing really well in the math two. She is just challenged enough with the new information and new concepts and yet 
is spiraling around to the information and concepts she was taught from last year. So she's comfortable as she's being stretched and learning the new concepts. So she's doing really well. She's being challenged and she um, is doing well in learning the new materials. As far as my fifth grader, um, this is the, the most deviation that I've done <laughs> with our math curriculum to date. And after much research and thought and troubleshooting, instead of moving her from book five, four to six, five, which would be the next um, book up, she is actually doing um, Saxon Math seven, six this year. And she is easily understanding the concepts. She is easily executing the problems. And what I'm doing is I am dividing the lesson in half. And so my plan is that she works through half of the lesson. She reads the lesson and completes the first 15 problems along with the mental math and the practice set of problems. And the following day she does the math fact sheet and she does the last 15 problems of the lesson. And that has been going really, really well. It seems to be just the right amount of challenge for her in the new concepts. And yet, as far as time-wise, she's pretty much spending only 30 to 40 minutes doing math now. And it's not something she dreads. If there's a problem that she is struggling with, she is even on her own coming over to the whiteboard and working through some of the math there on the whiteboard. And that has been excellent for her. She, this is a really good place for her. Um, the pace is really good and the time it takes to do math every day has been really good for us. So she's doing really well in math seven, six. So I'm really planning for her to be working through math seven, six um, for two years, but we'll just wait and see how she progresses through the book. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the Saxon Math Homeschool Curriculum. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you absolutely hate Saxon Math, you can feel free to give it a thumbs down. <laughs> But thanks so much for being here today. I hope you subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.